electric current, resistance of resistors and Ohm's law, as well as electric energy and the power of a circuit. Let's start with electric current. If there is a steady flow of electric charges, we see there is electric current. The current is a rate at which the charge flows through a cross-section area of a surface, generated by net charge flowing through this cross-section area A. The SI unit for current is ampere. 1 ampere equals 1 coulomb per second. Positive charge can carry current. When positive charge move generate current, the direction of current is the same as the motion of positive charge. Negative charge can carry current too. When negative charge move through a cross-section generate current, the direction of current is in the opposite direction of negative charge moving. In metals, electrons is much easier to move than positive charged nucleus. So in metals, the electric current is generated by negative charge. The direction of current flow is the direction of positive charge would flow. This is our conventional definition of current flow. It's common to refer to a moving charge as a mobile charge carrier. And a charge carrier can be positive or negative or both. Current is the flow of electrons in a circuit. To use electricity, we need electrons to flow in the same direction around a circuit. We usually use copper cables to form the circuit because the atoms that make copper have a loosely bound electron in their outermost or valent shell, which is free to move around inside the metal. This free electron is very easy to move, which is why copper is so popular. It's so easy to move that it will naturally just move to other copper atoms by itself, but this occurs randomly in any and all directions, which isn't useful for us. For us to make use of this, we need lots of electrons to flow in the same direction along the circuit. We can then place things like lamps in the way of these electrons so that they flow through it and then they generate light and heat, etc. To do this, we need to force the electrons to move and we can do that by applying a voltage. Voltage is the pushing force, it's like pressure in a water pipe. The more pressure we have, the more water can flow. The more voltage we have, the more electrons can flow. We've covered the basics of voltage in detail in our previous video, do check that out, links in the video description down below. So we need a lot of electrons to flow along a circuit and through our lamps to get them to shine brightly. However, the cable and lamps can only handle a certain amount of electrons passing through them. Just like a pipe is rated to handle a certain amount of water passing through it, or a certain pressure. If it exceeds this, then the pipe will burst. Likewise, if too many electrons pass through the cable or the lamp, then they will just burst or burn out. We refer to the flow of electrons as current, and we measure this in the unit of amperes, although you'll usually just hear people say amps. This is represented If a conductor is isolated, with no electric field or potential applied to the conductor, the electrons undergoes random motion in all directions. But on average, the average movement of the electron is zero. If we apply an electric field to the conductor, it creates an electric force on the electrons. On average, the electrons will move in a in the direction opposite to the direction of the electric field. Let's create a current. In this picture, the zigzag black lines represent the actual motion of a charge carrier in the conductor. Because of the random bouncing in all directions, the light drift speed for the charge carrier in terms of metal is electron is very, very small. 
The sharp change in direction are due to collision of electrons with ions and maybe other electrons. The net motion of the electron is opposite to the direction of the electric field. The drifting speed is much, much smaller than the average speed between collisions. When circuit is complete, the electric field travels with a speed close to the speed of light. The drifting speed of the charge carrier in terms of conductors and metals is electron. The drifting speed is only 10 to the minus 4 meter per second. But the electric field would be propagated inside the metal at the speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. This animation shows how current actually generated. Without the electric field, the average drifting velocity of the electron is zero. After we apply an electric field, notice even though the electron is still bouncing to all direction, but on average, there is a collective motion in the direction of the electric field. Now, in this simulation, they are using positive charges because we observe those charges are moved in the direction of the electric field. For electrons, on average, electrons will move in the opposite direction of the electric field.